Hey everyone, this is Kyle with Simulation Lab here in Brooklyn, New York. Coming back at you with another tutorial. Um, this one's, of course, using 3D Studio Max and Tyflow. Um, today we're going to be doing a little tutorial about how to create procedural bubbles, um, like blowing procedural bubbles uh, through like a hoop like this. So we'll uh, play this little video that I made. And the bubbles, of course, have pizza in them because pizza is my one of my favorite foods. Um, so we'll probably just cover the creation of the bubbles themselves, like blowing through, uh, like if the bubble film through the hoop. Um, and we'll maybe uh, explain how I put the little pizzas inside the bubbles, um, but maybe we won't cover that. It's a little bit more extensive, but. Uh, for now, we're just going to cover the bubbles, and then near the tail end, we'll get into the pizza. Um, okay, so let's jump into Max. Um, this one's a little bit more extensive, um, and there's like a hundred different ways you can do this, just as a disclaimer. Um, but this is just one way that I found that was relatively simple to do. Basically, we're going to be um, creating, we're going to be birthing spherical objects uh, going through the hoop. And then we're going to be using the tie boolean operator to basically boolean out the hole in the film. And then we're going to use, be, be using the tie mesher to basically mesh the film and the bubbles going through it. So uh, let's jump into Max. Um, set our units. I, I typically use centimeters. One unit equals one centimeter. Um, okay. And... First things first, we'll we'll go ahead and make the 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 little hoop blower hooper thing. I don't know what it's called. It's a little uh, bubble hoop. <laughs> uh, so that's basically just a simple torus. Um, make it pretty small at first. Um, maybe something like six point five, something like that. Add a few more segments. There go. That'll work. And then while we're here, we'll go ahead and create our film. Basically, all I did was I created a cylinder. Actually, you know what? We'll uh, we'll name this first. Um, the hoop. Yeah. And then maybe zero that out. Actually, we'll zero this out for now too. And then we'll create our cylinder. Cylinder is going to just cover just right on the inside of that hoop. Zero that out. And then we'll add a few more sides under this. Reduce the height segments because I don't need those. Maybe like something like uh, 40 for now is good. So now that we have that modeled, basically what we want to do is we want to get rid of the other faces. We could have just made a circle object and tossed an edit poly modifier on there, but we'll just go ahead and do this, edit poly, and remove these faces. That just leaves us this planar surface, and we'll turn on our edge faces so we can see the edges. And just so this is maybe a little darker color so you guys can see what's going on. Uh, we're going to put a subdivide modifier on this. Subdivide. We'll lower that down a little bit. That should be good. I'll show you guys what this does later on. Um, maybe we'll drag this whole thing up like 20. Oops. And 15. Sure. Maybe just for hashtag realism, we'll... Uh, Put a, the little stick in here too. Not necessary, but you know, just just to give you guys the illusion of this being a uh, one of the little blower Hooper blue blower things. I, don't, I gotta figure out what that's called. Uh, anyway, okay. So now that we have this set up, we'll go ahead and uh, create a tie flow object. 
and under helpers, under tie flow, create a tie flow icon, and drag that out. We're going to create a circle icon and position it. right in front of the soap film membrane. Actually, we'll just call this uh, soap film. We'll grab our icon, and this is circle. And we're going to put it back uh, a little bit further away from the soap film, just so we can see what's kind of happening here. Basically, what we want to do is we want to spawn bubbles or spheres coming away, like coming off of the icon and going through the soap film. But we want to spawn it a little bit further back. So basically, what we're going to be doing is we're going to put a slice modifier onto the Typhal object, um, and it's going to slice the backside of the bubbles as they pass through the soap film. So you don't really see the backs of the bubbles. It just looks like the soap film is being pushed out, and then the bubbles form. And then the tie mesher is going to take care of that sort of meshing um, uh, afterwards. But for now, all we're focusing on is just getting bubbles to appear off of the Typhlo icon. So now that we have this set up, we'll go ahead and stretch this out a little bit so you can see all the operators here. Okay, so we're going to do birth, and I think we're going to birth like from 0 to 100, and maybe we'll do like just 10 for now. Uh, we'll go ahead and display geometry, and we'll do position icon. Pick the typho icon, and we'll do a speed. Speed. And we'll do icon along icon arrow. Pick the icon arrow. All right. And then maybe we'll change this to um, maybe like just something a little higher too. Uh, let's just see. Let's see how this looks after we're after we're done here. Um, and then we'll do a shape. 3D, and we'll do uh, like a do a high-res geosphere, and scale this up to like 3,000 or something, and maybe like variation and put it like 50%. So they're a little bit different bubbles, different size bubbles. Uh, we'll play with this in a second here, but um, okay. So now that we have that set up, oh boy, so it does work. Um, Seeing some gigantic bubbles come through here. <laughs> so maybe we want to reduce this down to something more manageable. Let's do like 1600. When you want to make sure that the bubbles actually pass through the film, you can see this one kind of diverges. Um, So I mean, we'll just reduce this down to 1,200 for now, and mm. position icon instead of surface, we'll do pivot. That way, <laughs> that way the uh, spheres will spawn directly from the center of the tie flow icon, and not just from the surface of the icon itself. So now they like fly right through, and that looks pretty good for now. Some of them are a lot bigger. Oh, that one's that one's getting pretty big. So maybe we'll do variation at the size to like maybe like 40 or something, and reduce this down to a thousand. All settings that you just kind of have to play with until you get it right. But yeah, that looks a lot better. Okay. So again, a million different ways you can do this, um, but this is just this is just one way to do it. Um, so what we're going to want to do now is um, 
is we're going to do a surface test. Um, and basically, the bubbles themselves kind of fly out. I'll show you what this does. They kind of just fly out and they just go directly straight and they don't really do anything. And that's not really that realistic, right? Um, so what we want to do is when they get, uh, we could either do a time test um, or we could do a surface test, which is what we'll probably end up doing here. Um, basically, what we want to do is test that to see like either um, a certain duration goes by or if it or if the bubbles pass through a, sh a threshold um, and then they then something else happens. Maybe like there's physics that that occurs and they kind of just like start floating around. Um, but we, what we basically want them to do is as soon as they pass through the, the soap film, they kind of just kind of float around or they blow away or something, not just go directly straight. So we'll bring back our tie flow object here. Um, so we'll do a surface test here. And we want to want to create a surface first. I guess I should have done that before I did this. Um, get a box. And it'll be good. We want it. We want it to position. Uh, we don't have to make it that big. That's good. And we can right click on that and do uh, display as box. This is not renderable. So this is going to be our kill box. Or actually, no, the kill box comes later. Sorry. <laughs> this is going to be our um, um, box physics test. So whatever. Uh, okay, so now that we have that, bring back our tie flow. And this is going to be our surface test. And we're going to do a volume outside. So as soon as they're outside the box, something happens, right? And what we could do is just do like a force right afterwards. Maybe we'll do that first. Let's do that first. So let's see what this does. Um, so we'll do gra uh, gravity, maybe we'll like, we want to like almost put in zero gravity. So maybe we'll just do like 0.2 or something. I don't know. And maybe we'll like put like a little bit, let's get the, do a little bit in the X direction and, uh, maybe like make this super minimal and you know, like we'll do a little bit of Perlin noise. Uh, one point five something. Let's just see how this works. Change this to geometry. So as soon as the bubbles are outside of the soap film, they, something happens to them, and you can see they start doing something. Yeah, there you go. Now they start floating away. Yeah, they're floating away a little fast. Um. So maybe what we could do is we could put a slow modifier on that slow operator. Let's see how this looks. That's kind of cool. I'm going to put that down to like and again, all of these values is stuff that you can, you guys can tweak on your own. Um, I'm gonna do like a little bit. Eh, that's that's actually pretty good for right now. I'll do like a little bit less gravity. 0.08 or something. What I mean by gravity, I mean anti-gravity. Basically, um, if you put this the gravity at a negative value, the strength at a negative value, then they will act like real gravity and they'll fall to the ground, but we don't want them to fall to the ground, we want them to lift up. Um, so there's there's a little bit of a anti-gravity happening there, which is cool. So they're kind of like floating up. They're acting like bubbles. Not 
that's cool. So we'll we'll stick with this for right now, and we'll proceed to basically making. And there's a couple other things you could do. You could instead of doing this, you could put a time test in there. And so as soon as the bubble comes out, maybe it pauses, and then it lasts for a few like a few frames, and then and then it starts um, lifting up or something. Um, basically, it's just all it's to your discretion. But what we do want to have in here though is um, uh, we want to have a, some kind of kill plane in here. So basically, like the the tie measure will get really heavy um, if you don't start eliminating some of the spheres, and that this, if you have a ton of them. Um, so you want to have something where if it passes through a particular threshold, uh, then it kills the sphere. Um, so you, we can set that up. Um, that's that's pretty pretty simple to do. So that's basically just you know, another surface test. Uh, so we'll do a surface test and then we'll do volume outside again. And basically what we'll do here is we will create a sphere starting from the center out. And it kind of, this just only, this depends on like where you have your, um, camera set up. So you want to have this kill sphere, um, beyond, just, just beyond your camera. So you can't see the bubbles disappearing, like in the camera. Um, and we'll create this, and this is not renderable, display as box. And so you'll, you'll have to position this to your, to your liking when you have your camera set up in here. Um, so basically what we'll do is surface test outside of this, add selected, Um, okay, so once it's outside the sphere, then what does it do? Then it deletes. So we put a delete operator there. See, you can see that already started working. So as soon as the bubbles get, get to that sphere, as soon as they get outside the sphere, then they start deleting. Make that maybe a little, little bit more dramatic here. So there you go. And they start deleting. It's a quick and simple way to get to make sure that you're um, not having a ton of extraneous uh, mesh geometry that's being generated that's beyond the camera. Um, keep your scene a little bit more lean. Okay, so now that we have this set up, we're, we're basically done with this. We just got to add in our add in our couple uh, mesh uh, operators in here, and make sure you check uh, uncheck render only in these because we are going to be using these in the uh, uh, with it with the tie measure and some other operators so we're basically done with the tie flow object for now um, so what we're going to want to do now is we're going to want to set up our tie boolean so on our soap film here um, which basically yeah, well, we can keep we can keep the modifiers in here. I was going to collapse this, but we don't we don't really necessarily have to do that. If you're like dead set on, if you're totally sure that this is the number of polygons you want and everything is perfect, then then you can collapse the modifier uh, stack here for this object. But if you want to want to make sure that all this is still um, uh, parametric, then you can keep the stack here. Uh, so. Scroll down, we're going to do a tie boolean, and the input object is going to be the tie flow. Uh, basically, what we're going to want to do is subtract, I think it's A from B. Yep. So you want to do subtract A from B, and as you can see, the original tie flow object is hidden, still there, but this is one thing that's a little peculiar. One thing I have yet to figure out how to do is have both of them be uh, be visible. So like if you do uncheck, but if you go in your layers, uh, you can see the, the Typhoon object is still there. Actually, maybe that is working. Oh, oh, yeah. I, I remember why this didn't work. So this this works perfectly fine for right now. This is this is great. But what you want to have happen 
is that as soon as a particle is birthed on this side, you don't want to see it until it passes the threshold of the film, right? So it's a little strange. It's a, it's a little bit of a um, a little bit of an issue. Like we can't really, we don't want to. This this is looking perfect from this side, but beyond this, we want to get rid of the the bubble as it, you know, because that, that's not how bubbles are actually blown. They're blown they're blown from the film surface, right? So what we want to want to do is on the actual Typhlo object here. We're going to do a Typhlo slice modifier. And I'm going to show you what happens. It's a little bit of a problem. Um, sorry, we're going to do a slice, slice modifier. Turn this, turn this 90. And we're going to position this right. I'll just do it right there. And we're going to want to do it right on top of the film, something like that. Doesn't have to be perfect for now. I'm just kind of showing you how this how this works, and then we're going to want to do remove bottom. Here you go. So now you can see what's happening. So that looks great, but uh oh, something's wrong. The boolean is no longer working. You can see that there's not there's no inner ring in there anymore, so that's a little bit of a problem. You could you could leave this as it is, and you can put the tie measure on the soap film and the bubbles, and it'll look fine. The only thing that's a little bit weird is, is in the renders you don't see the the bubble being blown from the surface. It just looks like this bubbles are just appearing from uh, like a planar surface. It's so it's kind of strange. What you want to have is that refraction happening as the bubble, as the soap film kind of expands outward and then creates the bubble, right? Because if you imagine how bubbles are actually blown through a film, um, they you you see the backs, you see the refraction occurring and uh, the the um, the distortion of the light like through the, the the soap film like come off the film itself and then it forms the bubble, right? It snaps via surface tension. That's effectively what we're gonna set up with the tie measure in a second, but we want to make sure that the um, the bubble actually appears um, like con concave on the backside, right? So that's that's why we had that tie boolean operator in there. So basically, what we need to do is we need to clone our our entire tie flow object, um, and we're going to do clone it by a reference. So um, what we're going to do is maybe we'll just cut this for now, and then we're going to clone this as a reference. So this is going to be tie flow 2. And then what you'll see is in the clone, there'll be this blue bar right there. Um, so basically anything we do to the original tie flow object will affect both tie flow objects, but the referenced one, tie flow 2, um, is going to be the one that has our slice plane on it. Um, and that's the one that we're going to using the time measure. So let's see here. Um, so let's make sure this, so our tie boolean is still working. So that's cool. And both tie flow objects will follow the same. They will be the same. They won't deviate um, in terms of if you do, if you do play with the settings in the tie flow object, both of the, both of the tie flow objects will update. Um, you can also cache that out using the tie cache. Um, so they're, so they won't change no matter what you do. Um, okay, so we'll, we'll s select our Typhlo 2 object, and then we're going to paste in our slice plane modifier there. There you go. So that's going to complete the illusion. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to hide our first Typhlo object. So all we see... So we see our... So you see what's happening here? So you can see the tie boolean working on the liquid surface, and you can see the um, inside of the sphere itself. So that's that's important. That's that's going to give us that like refraction quality once you put the tie measure on the whole thing. Um, so maybe we'll drag this back a little bit more. So it's like right at the surface, the slice plane. There you go. Cool. So now that we have that set up, we're going to toss our 
tie mesh around there. We'll turn off edge faces for right now. And we'll go ahead and create a tie flow tie measure. And we'll go ahead and hide this kill sphere for now. We don't need that. Um, okay. So in our tie, tie measure, and you're probably going to want to save this for right now. Um, and uh, you could just um, bubble to it. I typically like to save before I use this tie measure. It's it's not it's very stable, but if you have a just an absolute shit ton of polygons, um, ton of faces on the tie measure, it's it's going to really slow it on your computer so just just keep that in mind if you uh if you do start with a ton of polygons on that so we're going to keep the mode of blob mesh we selected both the tie flow 2 remember that's the one that has the cut plane on it that's the referenced from the original tie flow object that's the original tie flow object is controlling the boolean of the surface film and the tie flow 2 is the one that has a slice modifier on it and it's it's the one that we reference with the tie flow with the tie measure Right, so, so the radius, uh, we'll bring this down to like one. And the voxel size, we'll do something like 0.5. So you, can, you guys can play with this as much as you, all you want here. Basically, you just want it to cover the soap film. You might have to increase the um, kind of have to play with this a little bit. And you guys can you can toss on a voxel filtering, you do Gaussian. Okay, so that uh, Gives us a little bit more to play with there now. Looks nice and smooth now. Uh, I'll turn on our edge faces and see what kind of polygon density we're looking at. So that, that's actually pretty good. Um, so that works pretty well, as you can see what's happening here. And there's a few things you can do here. You can put a relax modifier on it. Um, you know, you guys can play with this all you want here. But that's kind of getting, getting the effect we want. Um, and the more you play with the overall, let's see, maybe it's on wireframe. Um, you can see that tag measure is really thick still. So maybe we want to play with this a little bit more. You guys can, yeah, there you go. So like the more you play with this, and you guys can continue playing with these settings, uh, process particle meshes. Something like that will work for now. You can tell it's really thick, but in the rendering it doesn't really show up. Um, you're gonna you're gonna want to play with those settings and get the uh, thickness of the overall mesh to be thinner. Um, just be careful with the with the density of the mesh; it gets a little crazy. So basically, that's it. That's that's how. Um, see, it's it's looking pretty cool. So you can tell like the bubbles are procedurally generating from there. One thing I haven't yet to figure out is just how to make it one single surface. Um, the tie mesh. Do input geometry. It doesn't really do much. Um, the blob mesh is the only thing that I've found that has actually been able to work. But that's that's how I effectively made this uh, this animation here.
so that's it. Um, basically for now, you know, so now uh, you just basically set up your render settings, um, set up your camera and lights, and if you hit render, this thing will turn into bubbles and it'll look pretty cool. Uh, again, tweak, keep tweaking these settings. Um, you guys can probably get the, the mesh to be a lot thinner and a lot more high resolution. And, and uh, another thing you could do is if we hide the time measure, uh, we hide this time measure right now. Um, what you can do is set up a cloth simulation and a wind force that's pushing against this the soap bubble film. And then you can bind the particles um, from this original tie flow uh, as it's passing through um, the actual film. Um, you could do like a particle bind to the inner ring of the the soap film here as it passes through um, and then that and make it like a cloth object and then like if you add a force on it it'll look like it's actually blowing through it you know so there's like a few things you can do to make this to enhance the realism even more this is just one really simple way to create procedural bubbles right um, so the bubbles kind of float away and it's kind of cool yeah and I see if our kill plane's working still. There it is. That's good. And then, so as a final step, the what I what I did to put those pieces of pizza <laughs> in the bubbles themselves is basically I I did it two different ways to test how it worked. Um, basically, in your tie flow object, your original one here. Um, in the shape operator, you can create a sphere. You can really simply create a sphere. Uh, I won't do it here because the tutorial is going to last another half hour. But basically, you can create a, you can create the sphere. Then you can even put like a noise modifier on the sphere. That's another thing we can do to this. Um, and create your object inside of it, like a the the payload, if you will of the bubble is the slice of pizza, right? So you basically create a group that has the bubble and the piece of pizza, right? Or the, whatever the object you want as the payload inside the bubble. Um, you can group that, and then you can reference that in the shape, the, the shape operator. So if you reference that here, it'll spawn, um, in the birth operator, it'll spawn, instead of just a, the uh, high density geospheres that we did, um, it'll spawn the, it'll do a reference node and it'll spawn the objects that have the, the group objects with your bubble and the slice of pizza or whatever object it is inside the piece, inside the bubble. So that's one way of doing it. Another way is to cache this out. Oh, I guess you don't even need to cache it. You could just do another clone. You can clone the, the tie flow object as a reference again. And then instead of bubbles, you just select your pizza or select your the payload inside the bubble. So either way will work. Um, the only downside is if you if you do tweak the uh, tie flow object that has um, your payload, like the, the slice of pizza. If you tweak that, um, then the other uh, referencing tie flow object won't update because you can't uh, reference the two. I probably said reference before, but you'll have to make a copy, make an actual like new copy of the original tie flow object. Um, and that's going to be uh, a separate um, a separate uh, tie flow, but it will follow the same logic as your original one as long as you don't change it. So a couple, couple different ways of doing that. Um, both are pretty, very simple. But uh, yeah, feel free to play around. Um, I'm going to post this scene um, to Modulator. Modulator is a free web app that you guys can use. Um, there's some really cool projects on here. Um, so this is one of the tutorials that I recently posted. Um, I gotta log in, but basically, uh, I posted the files of how to create this um, procedural uh, destructible playing card castle thing. Um, so I'm going to post this
bubble project on here and I'll put the link in the description so you guys can download these files check it out um, and I encourage you to play around with it and see if you can find a better way to um, see if you can find a better way to to do this um, and make make some cool like procedural bubble animations um, if you do make something cool you can post your own version uh, of whatever you make onto the modulator project, which is pretty cool. So the way you do that is, let's say for in example, in this project, um, let's say if I downloaded the project files from this branch, I can go ahead and click create branch. I can name the branch whatever I want and they can click create branch. And then that'll add another bubble on here under the bu bubble diagram and then you can fill out all of your information in here. You can leave comments and you can follow particular projects and you can share them so please feel free to use modulator um, it's free and download these project files and others and uh, you know I, I look forward to, to seeing what you guys do with this so if you like this tutorial please feel free to smash the like button and subscribe um, to see more tutorials that I'll be posting in the future um, and let me know what you thought of it uh, if you you know if you wanted to know something else, uh, maybe we can cover it in a different video or something. Um, but just leave some comments in the comment section below, and um, and yeah, if you have any other recommendations for future tutorials or whatever, uh, just feel free to to reach out and let me know. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Uh, talk to you soon.